Hello. Some of you may have noticed that I've changed the name of my YouTube channel from the Steel Armadillo Garage to Zombie Hammer Garage. So I own three small businesses, the Steel Armadillo, Crawl Off Road, and Zombie Hammer. And on March 31st, I closed the Steel Armadillo and Crawl Off Road to concentrate more on my garage here and the things that I'm doing in retirement. Well, in fairness to the people that are considering buying the business, the Steel Armor Medillo and Crawl Off Road, I felt it wasn't appropriate that I continue to use that name. Um, so that way they can have the name, the rights to the name, the website and everything, and run the business the way they want to with any conflicts. So I'm going to sell off the Steel Armadillo and Crawl Off Road, hopefully in the very near future. But I'm keeping Zombie Hammer. We produce the knives like you see on the rack behind me. And we donate all of those to uh, nonprofits and other organizations to use as silent auctions, fundraisers, things like that. So since I've still got that business and I need a name for the garage, Zombie Hammer Garage it is. So welcome, stay tuned, and let's make some great cars together. All right, let's look at some of the boxes that came in the kit for the uh, universal front suspension. You may recall that I unloaded a rack and pinion um, from the large box. This is a hydraulic power steering rack and pinion. However, I don't intend to use that on this project. So I had to order a separate one. And so here we have the Mustang II manual rack and pinion. And we will be attaching this to electric power steering versus the older hydraulic power steering system that required hoses, a pump, a power steering reservoir, and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna do away with that. We're going old school with manual and then we're gonna upgrade it with electric power steering. Hopefully we're gonna find in the rest of these boxes, the rest of the components for the front suspension, and then we will start to assemble that suspension. This box says that it is control arms. And there's some handy stickers from Speedway Motors. Uh, they'll go on my garage door. Um, well, we did pretty good there. Um, and the hardware, the spacers, and more stickers. And the second arm. This one doesn't tell us what's in it. It's the mystery box. I'm not a mechanic, um, although I do have a mechanic in my family. So if I pulled this out of the box, he'd know exactly what it was and he could tell us. Uh, but that's not me. Um, and the instructions for assembling the subframe. This one is the sway bar kit, and it gives you the sway bars here. So this one is our sway bar kit. By that, I'm assuming that it is the hardware to attach the sway bar. One more 
one is hardware kit. Since the instructions are in this box, I'm going to guess that this is all of the generic hardware for all of the other portions of assembly. This one is also not labeled, very light whatever it is. Okay, this is, uh, I'm going to guess the part for the 9-inch uh, rear end. That's another project for another day. They're very well built. The welds are fantastic. A um, couple of little rough spots. Overall, I'm very pleased with uh, what I'm finding. This one tells us it's the spindle uprights. I think I can't really tell what that word is. All the abbreviations. Last thing that came with it is uh, the front hubs. There are two of those. And that's the, uh, in this case, it's the General Motors 5.5x4.75. And I was able to get the 9 inch Ford rear end axles in the same bolt pattern so we'll be able to have the same wheels in the front and the back so this is the front suspension kit and now we'll take these parts out and start to install them on the actual vehicle so good news and bad news the good news is i was able to install the manual rack and pinion for the Mustang II, and it fit really well. It was interesting to note that they've actually notched out the um, frame here for the spindle or the shaft, but the problem I found was that I only have three quarters of an inch of clearance between the oil pan and the steering rod, and that's where the motor's sitting up about three quarters of an inch to an inch. So I'm gonna to have to take the tabs, thank goodness they're just tack welded, off of the frame, uh, make new ones that'll be a little bit longer so that they'll reach the top of the frame in order to get the motor up another inch or an inch and a half. So that's gonna set me back on getting the front suspension put on and uh, We'll be back when we get that figured out. Yesterday, I installed the uh, Ford Mustang II manual steering rack and pinion. When you order this kit, it comes, well, it doesn't come with, you gotta buy extra, like everything else in the world. Um, offset bushings for a T-Bird. 
The problem is that, and I'll add a picture in here so you can see what I'm talking about. The instructions don't tell you if the offset is to be the, to the top or the bottom. And so I've installed it um, to the top, which should lower the rack and pinion. But I won't really know until I get the uh, outside corner done as to whether or not I actually installed it in the right place. And it could be that I have to pull all this off, pull the rack and pinion out, remove the bushings, flip them over, and reinstall the whole thing. So the second phase in the instructions, we've got 11 instructions, uh, after installing the rack, and that's what the instructions say, is install the rack using the provided bolts. That's it, figure it out from there. Install the lower control arm onto the cross member. Align the control arm bushings with the lower control arm holes and uh, use the 5 8 18 by 3 quarters. Um, so there's a picture here. I got a bag of bolts that came with it. And I've got uh, the lower control arm. So we should be able to put this right in here and throw in some bolts. Um, best of my ability and following the pictures we've got a bolt this one goes through here that bolt does not go all the way through so the longest bolt that they gave me does not go through the uh, frame. It is about an inch and a half too short. It says that it is a five and a half inch bolt. They shipped a three and a half inch bolt. The front bolts, yeah, the back is five and a half. The three, the front is three and a quarter. Um, this could be a front bolt, but if it is, then they uh, they definitely forgot to send the uh, rear bolts. Unless there's another bag, so let me go check that box. I'll be right back. Uh, well, good news. There's more bolts. That bolt looks plenty long enough. Normally I like to crank some tunes in the shop when I'm working, but uh, with YouTube's uh, music policy, I would probably find myself getting banned for playing a song that I didn't have permission to play.
I should note that after I get all of these on, um, I will actually take them all back off to paint them, but I wanted to make sure my spacing and everything is correct before we uh, apply paint so that I'm not painting them and then taking them off and putting them on and messing up the paint. So, uh, I'm going to grab the, actually I'm not going to grab the other one. We're going to continue on the driver's side until we know whether or not our, uh, our rack and pinion is in the right place. And then we will um, visit the passenger side. So next, let's check our handy dandy instructions. Uh, install the lower control arm bump stops using the supplied 3 8 lock nuts. So let's go find us a bump stop and uh, then we're supposed to install shocks. However, I haven't ordered shocks yet because I don't know if I'm going to do coilovers or air ride. So I guess I better make a decision on that very soon. If you've got a uh, suggestion or recommendation, please comment in the comment section and let me know whether you would be installing coilovers or air ride suspension. But let's uh, see if we can find a box stop. <sighs> Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to find a socket for this and then we'll move to that. Alrighty then. Looks like we're going to be a 9 16th. <clears throat> I'm actually not going to tighten that up because, like I said, I'm going to pull it right back off. So we've got it in position, and that will at least tell us whether we are getting full travel here. I can see that uh, the rack and pinion comes up into here, so um, it can't hit the bump stop without hitting the, uh, the steering. So let's uh, see what's next. Okay, our next step four is to mount the upper control arms to the subframe using the half inch 20 by three inch bolts and lock nuts. Um, they both appear to be the same. Um, the difference is of course on the angle on this end. So I'm gonna have to make sure that I get them right side up. Um, from the looks of the drawing, uh, this tab goes up. So we should be able to put this in, um, in this fashion. Okay. So So one half is our bolt diameter. 20 is the threads per inch, which we, 
would be a fine course. And this is not a three inch bolt. This is a three inch bolt. But there's only two of them. And I should have four. If I'm in the right bag. So let me go see if there's another bag in there that's got four bolts in it. All right. This one's got eight. So I'll show fingers. Right, that's three. So we need two of those for here. And the lock washers. And it does not call for washers, lock nuts. It does not call for washers. So here we go. Caster shims. Aha! There we go. I was thinking this was very long and we have caster shims to go in here. This is where it gets tricky, not being a mechanic, because I'm not exactly sure how to set the caster. But uh, I'll get the shims in here because right now I'm just looking to make sure everything lines up right. And then when my mechanic shows up, he can help me with the caster. Step four, mount the upper control arms to the subframe using the half inch 20 by three bolts and lock nuts. Rotate the cross shafts so that the caster shim pockets are facing towards the center of the vehicle. Install the bolts through the caster shims, cross shafts and subframe as shown, then secure with a half inch 20 lock nuts. For initial inst installation, install Number two, caster shim with a hole position to the front of the pocket. This should be a good initial starting point for alignment. So, do they have numbers on them? They do. Okay. So let's find this number two. I've got zeros and ones. I've got zeros and zeros. And there's a number two. And there's number two. All right. And it said with the holes positioned to the front of the pocket. Okay. That should be our So this is new to me, but uh, just so if anybody's interested in what the difference is, the 
position of the hole is different. So this is a number one, this is a number zero, and you can see the positions of the hole shift. And so that's what's gonna set the camber. Uh, seems like awfully long bolts. Um, but it is what it asked for. And so if I don't need to tighten it down, I'm not going to tighten it down. Um, we'll see where we go because I can get to it if I need to tighten it down uh, for the next step, which is install the uprights and steering arms. Okay, these are our steering arms and we need our uprights. <clears throat> we'll go grab some more parts. Okay. I don't know how far this is supposed to screw on. Um, but we get the guy in here that knows the answer to that question. Comes with a Zerk fitting. Um, I didn't install it yet. Um, we'll get to that when we get to it. Like I said, all this has to come back off for painting. So I'm trying to install as little as possible now. And then... Uh, We'll install all the rest of it a little bit later. <sighs> it's interesting as I pull this apart and I read that it is the uh, Mustang 2 front uh, rack and pinion steering using the Thunderbird offset um, bushings, uh, Corvette style hubs, and this particular piece is listed as a Camaro part. So we certainly have a Frankenstein going on here, but the uh, techs at Speedway Motors know their stuff. Um, this isn't their first rodeo, and if this is what they sell, then I'm going to trust it. I'm going to take this castle nut down just beyond the uh, holes for the cotter key that goes in there. Uh, again, I haven't put the dirt fitting on, so there's no grease in here. So, you know, it's going to go all the way down and collapse, and I don't want to do that and damage it. So, I just want to get enough so that I can start to piece everything together and get a good look at what it's going to look like. Um, and I think we're going to be good. Um, yeah, so we need to get um, install the uprights and steering arms. I'm going to assume that we've just installed the steering arm. Now what we need is the upright, and it's a cast piece that's in there. So let's go find that and uh, see how that fits. Okay, first step five is installing the uprights 
and the steering arms. We got the steering arm. This, I guess, is our upright. And uh, it looks to me like it's going to drop right in here. Let's push that one out. So far, I'm really impressed with how things go together. I haven't had to uh, run out to the hardware store to get missing bolts. Um, so, so far, so good. Okay. These bolts came with it but they're for uh, something in the back. So let's see what goes in here. It says it's a half inch 20 by inch and three quarter. Okay, so let's knot this in. Let's check this one. This is a half inch 20 by inch and three quarter. Uh, grab another one of those. And, yep, I think we're good. Try to lower this camera. I don't know how the other angle was, but maybe that'll give you a little bit more vision of what we're doing here. Okay, install the uprights and the steering arms. Install the upright onto the lower ball joint. Install and tighten the supplied caster nut, which we haven't tightened. Repeat with the upper ball joint. And 
install the cotter pins. Bolt the steering arms to the spindles. Okay, so spindles are next. Make sure to use lots of Loctite. Okay, let's go get a spindle. <sighs> M1275. Now this is the Corvette um, spindle and it's a 5 by 4.75 uh, bolt pattern. Does say metric hardware, including metric lug nuts. So let me go find three M12 bolts. All right, so we got uh, three of the M12 bolts and they take a 3 8 uh, Allen head. Okay, the next thing it tells us to do is to install the outer tie rod ends and jam nuts. Ah, some pictures of my friend on this project. I can't put them in the ground. Okay. magnetic parts trays if you are doing a project like this and you've got multiple bags of bolts gives you the opportunity to uh, dump one bag in one bin and not uh, get them all mixed up so let's see what we got my guess is we're going to be running this one through here and then we're going to put the nut towards the spindle And that is not the one we're running through there. And that is not the one we're running through there. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell me. Well, let me look at the other side of the picture. That came through two and a quarter. Half 20, two and a quarter.
half 22 and a quarter. Um, it's really long. Uh, it's another one of those, when I either rebuild a second time, I may. I'm not getting this to stop it too much. Let's make sure it is. I think it's the right nut. Um, the half 22 and a quarter that it asked for is a little long. So I'll probably swap that out to at least a uh, half 22. Uh, two inch instead of two and a quarter. Um, let's see. This is funny. This, this lock nut starts on that bolt, but it won't start on this one. Um, that's one of the problems with the, the fine thread bolts. Is it's really easy to mar them. Um, there we go. We're we're cooking with gas now. And that's going to go up um, to, I just had it here. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. There we go. Um, This goes there. This goes there. And then we have the sway bar, but I'm not really interested in putting the sway bar on because um, it's going to come back off. And especially with me having to pull this motor out, um, I'm not interested in um, putting anything on there that could possibly get injured, damaged, whatever along the way. So I'll shoot a picture of this. Uh, and that will wrap up this week's video. <sighs> okay, wrapping up this week's video, we did get the Mustang 2 manual uh, rack and pinion in. We discovered that, of course, we have to raise the motor because at that level we're good, but you can see the motor mount sitting a little high here. So I'm going to raise the motor one inch from the holes in the mounts. And then we came over and we got the driver's side front um, steering assembly assembled. Um, now that I know how it goes, I am going to take it apart, paint it all. I'll, uh, I'll redo the motor mounts, paint the motor mounts, and get the whole front frame assembly painted up. And then we'll reinstall the uh, steering assembly as you see it today. If you have comments or suggestions that can help make my build better, please feel free to list them down below. And as always, please subscribe and like the videos and share it with other people that are fans of uh, building cars. Have a great day.